A notable trade this week, a notable free agent signing. Should the Houston Texans have been in on either of them or maybe both? Let's investigate. Powered by my friends at BetUS. They'll take care of you in that link in the description down below. Matthew Judon, the edge rusher from the Patriots. He gets traded to the Atlanta Falcons. And then the former All-Pro safety of the Denver Broncos, Justin Simmons. He's joining Judon in the ATL to play for the Dirty Birds. Should the Texans have made either of those moves or maybe both of those moves this week to help strengthen the 2024 season? Let's talk about Judon first of all. This was a guy that was unhappy with the situation in New England, and he can say it's about money, but best I can tell, he's not getting new money in Atlanta, so he probably didn't want to be on a crappy team. So the Texans would have checked the box maybe from Judon's desire of a new team of, hey, this is not a crappy situation. You go from Gerard Mayo and Drake May as your head coach and quarterback to D'Amico Ryans and C.J. Stroud, I think Matthew Judon would have been okay. You know what he would have not been okay with? Being a backup for the Houston Texans. Judon's one of the better players in the front seven for the Atlanta Falcons. Judon would, no questions asked, be a backup for the Houston Texans. He's not starting over Daniel Hunter, and he's not starting over Will Anderson. Neither one of those guys would be behind Matthew Judon. And I'd go as far as to say, if you don't get two years ago or three years ago Matthew Judon, there's probably an argument that you just rather would put Derek Barnett out there than Matthew Judon. And maybe I'm a little ahead of myself. I am a little high on what Barnett's been able to put together in training camp. But Judon, I don't know how he would ever be happy in Houston. And that's just from his situation. Like He was upset in New England. I don't know that Houston was a situation that was going to make him happy. They certainly weren't going to pay him right away and invest heavily in him to make him happy. It's like most people can be happy if you pay him enough money. Uh, that was not what the Texans were going to do. And then you get into the fact that he was traded for a third-round pick. Like I know the Texans checked in, according to Jeremy Fowler of ESPN, but I can't imagine Nick Casario was even – mildly interested in trading a third round pick maybe maybe a fifth round pick and then you start to look around and you're like hey this edge rushing room here with Matthew Judon and Derek Barnett and maybe Jerry Hughes in addition to the two starters and Will Anderson and Neil Hunter you start to put together a really really nasty pass rush that gets uh you know basically is relentless throughout the course of a game for the opposing team but again that's Judon if he would have been happy in Houston being a backup. I don't think that was the case. You got to factor that in. And again, the cost. Just it made no sense to trade a third-round pick for Matthew Judon. Not when you can take that third-round pick if you feel like you really need something and trade at, say, the trade deadline and shore up or round out something on this Texans team. Judon made next to no sense for the Houston Texans. I'm glad that he's not a member of the Houston Texans. Good luck in Atlanta. They probably should have just used their top 10 pick on a defender and not spent a third round pick uh, on adding Matthew Judon. In fact, they probably could have just used the first round pick on a defender and then used a later round pick to draft a quarterback. Yeah, you know, Atlanta. Let's, let's not try to figure that thing out, <laughs> okay? All right. Uh, they got Matthew Judon. The Texans should not have been interested in adding Matthew Judon. A minute here for my friends at BetUS. Use the link in my description down below to get a 125% deposit match on your first three deposits up to $2,000. And while you're scrolling through on BetUS, go over to the receiving touchdowns for players this season and see how crazy it is that Stephon Diggs' number is five and a half touchdowns. Do you know how long it's been since Stephon Diggs hasn't had six or more touchdowns in the NFL? It has been years since Stephon Diggs didn't have six or more touchdowns. This is crazy. He's dicing people up in training camp. He looks as good as he's ever looked. He's got tons of really good teammates around him, and that's probably why the number's a little low. Okay, they think that it's going to get spread around. Well, Stephon Diggs told us, hey, it's not about who's open. It's about who's most open. You know who's been most open in training camp? Stephon Diggs. Ooh, you might need to check this out on BetUS. And when you want to check it out, check it out with the link in my description down below. And get your 125% deposit match up to $2,000 on your first three deposits from my friends at BetUS. The Texans should have been interested in adding Justin Simmons. Look, I've said on this channel here before, I believe Justin Simmons is a game changer. And in the Texans' defense, he would be a game changer. And if I was the general manager, 
the Texans would probably be terrible, but I would have signed Justin Simmons and I would have signed him back in April or May or June or July or the early part of August. Like Justin Simmons would be on the Texans if I was the GM. Um, the monetary investment to Simmons, which is a contract that could get up to $8 million, that ultimately scared me away a little bit when I finally saw that. That investment in Simmons is pretty hefty, and that cuts into most, if not all, of your kind of move-around fun cap space that the Texans have. Look, close to $20 million in cap space, and you could free up a little bit more here or there. You don't really want to do that, but Close to $20 million in cap space, you've got to have some of that money set aside to operate over the course of the season. And if you added Simmons now at the number that he ultimately got from the Atlanta Falcons, there goes your trade deadline flexibility. Maybe it limits your ability to claim some people on waivers and then maybe makes you maneuver or change around some money on a different contract, make it a little bit less uh, advantageous for the Texans in the long term. So I didn't love the monetary investment on Simmons. Now, if you told me that it was Jimmy Ward and Justin Simmons, Jimmy Ward, Justin Simmons, and Jalen Petrie is the top three safeties for this team, like I would feel really good. The Texans seem to see be really good with their five guys. They are bringing back four guys from last year, and they added a rookie. The four guys from last year, Jimmy Ward and Jalen Petrie, playing safety, but also playing a little bit of slot cornerback. And then the backups from last year, Eric Murray and MJ Stewart. Now it's worth noting three of those four names saw their seasons drastically affected via injury. And that's something that you need to take into account when you're planning long-term and planning ahead for this safety room. I mean, Eric Murray, MJ Stewart, and Jimmy Ward all had seasons affected last year by injury. Petrie wasn't very good. Part of the reason he's playing a new position this year. So the talent that the Texans have, like that's not just a good enough argument. Like, oh, they're they're set. They didn't need Justin Simmons. Like Simmons is better than probably all those guys. So there was something maybe in addition to the money that the Texans didn't want that or didn't feel comfortable with that, or they liked their four guys plus the rookie and Kalen Bullock. And look, I've been impressed with Bullock in training camp, but let's not pretend Kalen Bullock hopping on the field in you know uh, a four you know, our five, six defensive back look is anywhere close to what Justin Simmons could be in 2024. It's a very much a 2024 move, but so is Jimmy Ward, Eric Murray, MJ Stewart, and really the, the last year for Jalen Petrie to prove himself uh, and have you count on him long-term. Like those are all 2024 moves. So I, I liked the Simmons idea. I didn't love the price point. You probably could have got away with managing it that way, but the Texans feel pretty comfortable with the five guys that they have at safety. And I would say this, I do believe that D'Amico Ryans and Nick Casario deserve a tiny bit of benefit of the doubt in the safety situation. Now they deserve a lot of benefit of the doubt in various other portions of this team, but at safety, they deserve a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because D'Amico Ryans has a very specific way. He wants his safeties to play. They were very good while not being name brand safeties in San Francisco. Uh, when he was out there, he had young guys that stepped up. He had a guy like Jimmy Ward that finally took it to the next level in San Francisco. D'Amico Ryans can maybe make do and if you're in October and you feel like you need some safety help, you can go out there and trade for a guy at the trade deadline and, and change some things, alter some things that way. Again, Simmons would have made it pretty restrictive from having to add to the team at the trade deadline. Maybe you don't need to add to the team if you have Simmons already, but D'Amico Ryans and Nick Casario, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt here on the safety room. Now they could quickly via injury, via poor play, be proven wrong and lose the benefit of the doubt, but I feel like they have done enough to at least earn a slight benefit of the doubt with that safety situation and not signing Justin Simmons this week. Again, I didn't, I didn't love the almost $8 million. I thought it was going to be a little bit lower for Justin Simmons. They'd have found the money though. You can't let money stand in the way of a uh, fantastic opportunity. Would you have signed Justin Simmons, would you have traded for Matthew Judon? Let me know in the comment section down below on your way down to the comment section. Throw me a thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And 
How about a little history lesson for you real quick? Benefit of the doubt. I was curious about where this idiom came from. Idioms are sayings that we say that we don't actually mean what we mean sometimes. So like, uh, I'm going to go hit the hay. You know, beds used to be made out of hay. You can look up what an idiom means. But uh, the benefit of the doubt was likely first used in the legal system in England in the Irish treason trials of 1798 and likely has some origins around the words reasonable doubt, which you hear in uh, law and order or court if you've been there recently. Hopefully you haven't. And if you are watching this because court didn't go your way, uh, thanks for checking in on your free time. Uh, send me an email. We can be pen pals if you are in the slammer because you couldn't prove with it. That's a whole other thing for another time. Appreciate my friends at BetUS for powering this video. Uh, they do a fantastic job in letting you get in the game and take it to the next level. You're going to get a 125% deposit match up to $2,000 on your first three deposits. When you use my link in the description down below, you're going to enjoy, my friends, at BetUS. Appreciate you watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I can't wait until we talk Texans again soon.